The Frankie Files. everybody, Frankie T's here. Welcome to Sunday chat, 1 to 2 p.m. Every Sunday about cults, mind control, religion, etc. Today we're talking about being agnostic in time of the holidays. Cult survivors who are agnostic, live Reddit talk. Being agnostic in the holidays, 2022. Um, if there's an echo, you know, send me a text in chat. I think we got it handled. Uh, just let me know. Ernest Renan said, the prayer of the agnostic is, Oh God, if there is a God, save my soul, if I have a soul. <laughs> Love it. An agnostic's prayer. He said, I confess that I doubt. I want the truth and have no desire to whisper prayerfully into a hole. So neither believing nor disbelieving, I wrap myself in uncertainty and go out to build my world. Besides, what is there truly to pray for that someone might answer for wisdom for strength, for courage, for peace. These are all fine, worthy, and important things. But I doubt, I confess that I doubt, that any be given, be given or bestowed. And suspect they must be earned and deserved. A prayer for revelation excuse me, revelation, perhaps, but it seems a silly presumptuous wish to invite myself in with those called and those chosen. Pray for forg forgiveness or maybe redemption. I have my regrets and I have much to learn, but forgiveness is something I hope to give away freely and not really something to seek. No, with humility, knowing, yes, knowing, I'm just a speck on this speck of a world. I would ask whomever may be that you do what is right in your infinite wisdom, as will I, the best that I can. Gary Witt, an agnostic's prayer. Kind of cool. These are the times when this time is godism is shoved down our throats and it gets a bit much during christmas which as you know if you've researched anything about the holiday the birthday that's being celebrated is not the real birthday of the person called jesus so look into that atheism i would not call myself an atheist but let's get the definition out of the way between atheism atheism and agnosticism atheism is the broadest, in the broadest sense, is an absence of belief in the existence of deities. Less broadly, atheism is a rejection of the belief that any deities exist. In an even narrower sense, atheism is specifically the position that there are no deities. Atheism is contrasted with theism, which in its most general form is the belief that at least one deity exists. Okay. Agnosticism. A person who holds the view that any ultimate reality, such as God, is unknown and probably unknowable broadly. One who is not committed to believing in either the existence or the non-existence of God or a God. I would identify as agnostic. A person who is unwilling to commit to an opinion about something political, agnostic agnostics so they it can be political but um to continue doubtful or non-committal 
the history is that agnostics do not deny the existence of God. Instead, they hold one cannot know for certain whether or not God exists. The term agnostic was coined by the 19th century British scientist Thomas, Thomas Huxley, H in the middle for the name, who believed that only material phenomena were objects of exact knowledge. He made up the word from the prefix a meaning without, not, as in amoral, and the, no and the noun gnostic. Gnostic is related to the Greek word gnosis, knowledge, which was used by early Christian writers to mean higher esoteric knowledge of spiritual things, hence Gnostic, referred to those with such knowledge. In coming the term, in coining the term agnostic, Huxley was considered as Gnostic, a person, a group of his fellow intellectuals, ists, as he called them, who had eagerly embraced various doctrines or theories that explained the world in their satisfaction, because he was a man with a rag of a label to cover himself with, quote marks. Huxley coined the term agnostic for himself. It's first published use, 1870. Okay, well, just to confuse you even more, right? <laughs> So many definitions and things change through time with the meaning of words. It's fun and interesting. Okay, quote, Mike Treater. I'm sorry if my atheism offends you, but guess what? Religious wars, jihads, crusades, inquisitions, censoring of free speech, brainwashing of children, murdering of albino, forcing girls into underage marriage, um, male and female mutilation, stoning, homophobia, homophobia, and rejection of science and reason offends me too. Hmm. CDN.quotesgram.com there. So I was in a um, new age religion, and I have a really special guest with me here today, my mom. Say hi. <laughs> hi. No I'm, pressure. I'm over here. Mom, what's up? So my mom also survived the New Age religion. And they it's ironic how they treated, because Jesus is one of the doctrine, right? Yeah. So we're not going to practice traditional religion. But we're going to have a holiday bazaar to make a ton of money, and it's going to be a Christmas bazaar. Are you cool with that? Everyone's like, sure. <laughs> so many religions um, use Jesus, and that's one of my complaints. It's like, you know, this, give this guy a break. <laughs> I, uh, sorry, that's humor, okay? It's humor. But... But yeah, so you and I, um, since we were there, and then even since we left, really don't celebrate the holidays much. I feel like, you know, skip. No, my um, my thoughts are, are more towards uh, celebrating the winter. The seasonal change. So you're um, pagan? <laughs> I don't know what to label me. Wait, with I need to I need to label you, please. Hi, I'm Society. I really need to stick something <laughs> on you so I understand your belief system and how to manipulate you. How <laughs> dare you not fit in? Why? I don't. I <laughs> I haven't not doing that. <laughs> I haven't for a very long time now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like. So it's no big, because I remember when we were kids, we celebrated Christmas all the time. And it was like past, you know, grandma yeah, would read scriptures a little bit and we would do our little prayer and uh, celebrate the steps of the 12 days of Christmas, etc. And then when we joined a new age religion, which was Jesus, Buddha, Gandhi. Why? I can't explain to you because none of you who survived a cult can explain to me either. You didn't, you just, we just chucked Jesus out the window. He's on the, 
all his scriptures and stuff. Yeah, they're good, but we're not celebrating his birthday. So Morningland didn't celebrate Christmas. And some of you might be in that boat too, but we haven't in a while. It's almost like skip. No. <laughs> skip a whole season. How can you do that? Well, I know you get gifts for extended family, but I've always been like, nah, skip. Just, I don't, I don't want to pick up a habit that's so expensive anyway. Um, <laughs> getting those gifts for, but you know, when I first left, I did celebrate benignly, constantly. You know, I get everyone at work a gift. I get all my friends a gift. I do all that, the season of giving, right? And all the rituals and games that go with it. But I am so comfortable not celebrating it at this point in my life. Nothing, nothing's really lost. You can go to other events with friends. How do you feel? Well, even, uh, even the uh, celebrations at work, I avoided, you know, if it was during my work time, I would go and um, mm -hmm. participate. But not often on my own time, no. But I know a lot of people feel pressure to do it. And not everyone's Christian. So it's like, it's like, hey, back off. You know? I agree. Not everybody's Christian. <laughs> and um, especially in a large work em environment, it was very interesting to see us celebrate Christmas when there were hundreds of people that were coming and going that were not Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, I, I like the idea at, well, I'm just going to focus on the work situation right now. Mm -hmm. We'd all sign up to what to bring to eat and what we were going to furnish and what we were. So we know what, what is going to be there? The whole office experience, you know, yeah. Yeah, that, that office experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it was just a celebration of the time of year. We didn't do anything spiritual with it. Well, when I was in Orange County um, one time a few years ago, I was talking to this Chinese woman who was like an exchange student. So I was in somewhere near Irvine. And she says to me, um, yeah, I'm not Christian, and, and in China, we don't celebrate Christmas, but it is a consumer holiday. I was like, what? What do you mean? In China, you don't celebrate Christmas, but it's a consumer holiday? You know, I was like, eyebrows up. What are you talking about? And she said, well, over time, we're not really allowed to celebrate the variety of religions at all in China, and but everyone has adopted the um, retail holiday element of Christmas. So we, it's a tradition. We have the lights and the decorations and the shopping and we all, uh, do Christmas activities. I'm like, but no Jesus? Nope. No Jesus. <laughs> so to me, that's like the whole point, uh, that cracks me up. If you've ever worked in that industry, like I, when I was younger, when I was waitressing, I had a lot of exposure to Christmas activities. And then I would get second jobs, you know, like uh, holiday pay type jobs, Macy's, whatever was uh, lucrative at the time. And the the melee of it can drive you nuts. The pressure, um, because people are trying to rectify their whole year with that gift. I'm telling you, you didn't treat that person well. And now I've got to make sure to show them it's like wait that's not right that's not even supposed to be the spirit of it but yeah so and the and so so you know some of you who just tuned in i started with an agnostic prayer and you'll have to check that out but i am sharing um here today too and don't forget mom's here so if you have questions um mom is a morning land survivor and she's been my main support in speaking out against morning land and feel free to type stuff in the chat. I'll keep an eye. But this website called BigThink.com is pretty great for not only articles, but historical um, information on philosophy, too. And it's pretty interesting because they handle, um, you know, 
back to the Greek days where some of these ideas um, got started. Some examples on big questions on bigthink.com. What um, do we have free will? Is religion helping or hurting us? Are we alone in the universe? Should we trust science? Stuff we all think about, right? And they have multiple um, authors and articles, and it's pretty cool. I have found some wonderful material. Paraphrasing, one of the great quotes I found there is that um, when man wanted to form a connection to God and wasn't understanding how to do it, we created a person that we could relate to and named it God. And everyone has their own version of God. And that was our own um, impulse to connect to what we don't know. And it's funny to me now, it's so clear to me now, uh, but I, you know, for 35 years, I didn't bother with trying to understand my cult experience. And uh, now I definitely am trying to do so more and more. And so basically the idea of God was a given for me for most of my life. Um, I'm sure you'd agree. You had a church experience before we went to morning land mm -hmm. and then you were kind of discouraged with organized religion. Right. And we just, we just carried forth uh, what our family had pretty much believed my entire life. Um, uh, it wasn't necessarily going to church every day. It was a, definitely a belief in God. It was a belief in, uh, as Carlin says, the guy that's watching over us every move we make. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. it's pretty much accepted now. I'm I'm feeling much more relaxed. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's those poets and stuff. Your God is a mean old God. Um, there's there's all there's a lot of literature through time people making fun of the fact that there's so many interpretations it's like it's given you know everything's an interpretation let's just get that out of the way there's no absolutism on anything and one of the grifts i say god is a grift not meaning god doesn't exist but i do not know any proof that god exists i'll just say that right so but i know there is some higher power or some kind of connectivity that or creation that that took place so you know i'm not trying to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but the idea when i say god is the largest grift i mean people use the term and the idea of god to shake people down you know god is in my ear and he told me you're going to be my concubine uh-huh yeah you already know I hear God. I told you I channel. God is in my ear and he said, we need to vote for so-and-so. <laughs> oh, I got a new message. Can I have your bank account number is what God wants to know. I mean, that's what I've seen, you know, when it's so distasteful, like our family's experience being pried apart with a crowbar psychologically and then destroyed them. Um, to hate each other for years. We barely got back together within the last few years, Juju. Yeah. Nicknames uh, aside, mom is who you're speaking to. <laughs> and guys, if you have a question for mom, feel free. I'll check the chat just to make sure. Uh, but we, we survived Morningland Church and it was like New Age uh, is a hodgepodge, you know. Uh, aura readings, astrology, tarot, numerology, everyology. Um, the whole idea of science and God combined is what New Age is about. It's a grift. And then it's a pyramid scheme to financially support a few at the top and traffic people through and grab all their assets. So so I know I know now what it's all about in most cases with new religion. And these times are so funny because like I'm a societal outsider. Super comfortable in this role. Um, Angelica commented 
Um, let me check you one sec. I'm getting this comment live time. Okay. Literally homeless, sleeping in the snow in my car. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. So this is the reality of what goes on during Christmas. And we're all supposed to ignore that these things are going on, that, you know, people would have rather have Apple versus Elon Musk talks, but instead of helping people, um, you know, feel free to check the chat of this person said they're homeless. If you can help click on them and uh, do what you can and have a conversation. Connectivity. Uh, I'm not saying I know who they are. Uh, you can vet them yourself. Uh, but this is a seriously difficult time for so many people. And that's why I've always been on Frankie Files podcast. I think you know this, mom. I often do the suicide hotline, which they have a new abbreviated one that you can share with anyone you know is having issues. It's 988. If you dial 988, at the suicide hotline um, will be on the line and help you with resources. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Powerful meat says uh, family has rejected them because they're leaving a Muslim cult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Departure is death. Very difficult. I left a, a dollar in my pocket and no Reddit talk to tune into, for sure. <laughs> we didn't have radio back. We had radio. Uh, we had radio, Mom. But we didn't have um, any groups like this. Um, Culture Awareness Network, we've talked about that. Well, <laughs> times have surely changed. We had an organization that was... Uh, nationwide that was trying to help as many people as we could, mm -hmm. not just education-wise, but um, trying to connect them to uh, some kind of emotional help. Right. That was a great organization. It was uh, sued out of existence by Scientology guys. Um, I recommend janjalalich.com that's not how it's pronounced but j a n j a l a l i c h.com it's pronounced yanya it's super hard for me to get my head around i've been trying for about 6 months <clears throat> learning curve sorry dr lalish but her writings have really blown my mind um with her sociology approach it's super compassionate about like why groups interact the way they do. And let's face it. You can watch any YouTube video, watch a school of fish interact, you know, a group treats an individual a certain way. And so we all want to belong to a group, right? Okay. So, so let's talk about what do you do during the holidays when you're not going to church services and the rest of the world or your family is going to church services. One of the reasons I like having it on Sundays, you guys, 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific time, which is staggered throughout the U.S., you know, right after church or whatever. Um, church replaced with discussion is a cool thing for me because um, I wasn't able to think while I was in the cult. They disarm your critical thinking and compromise you so that you're not using that because that gets in the way of programming and getting stuff done like free labor, sex trafficking, you know, <laughs> the huge. <laughs> Do I sound glib? I'm sorry. It's just that they've proven themselves over and over to have this handbook of douchebaggery Oh, God. Okay, so I haven't had your take on this. You haven't been on these live ones. No. What's your take on Keith Raniere after we watched The Vow Season 2? Oh, my. You like that guy? I had no Nexium. idea how, how sick this man was. Surprise. Or is, actually. Serious pedophile. Career pedophile. Yeah, I've never... 
I've never paid attention to the news items of pedophiles and oh my gosh, this mm -hmm. this is this is an eye opener, a heart opener, a mind opener. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Nexium is beyond beyond. Loss of words. Yeah. I am at a loss of words. I have nothing to compare it to. Mm. Uh, how 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 prolific he was, and and uh, how it, it, and how people neglected to treat him the way he should be treated, like finally putting him behind bars. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, there's two different comments. So there's one person in the chat, Angelica, who's homeless sleeping in snow in her car and powerful meat. My family doesn't want me because I'm leaving a Muslim cult. Whew, man, I'll tell you, this pressure to be in a religion with the freedom of religion is pretty confusing. Am I right? I mean, get down on your damn knees. Now, worship something. <laughs> I'm telling you, now it's like, what's there's the freedom of religion. But you, I remember you and I talked about this a little bit, Mom. Uh, we talked about freedom from religion the first time you talked about that. It was with Priscilla Coates at uh, Cult Awareness Network, right? Yeah, Priscilla was. Um was a person that was taking care of the Los Angeles, California district, mm -hmm. as far as cult awareness network is concerned. And uh, she was interviewed on a, a news program and she, she was answering questions and talking about cult awareness networks and cult in general. Yeah. And the young man interviewing her said, uh, so you want, you would like to have, Freedom from cults, from <laughs> freedom right. from religion. There you go. Right. And I, 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 I agree like, with what? that. I had no idea <laughs> that, that my mouth was going to say freedom coming from cults. I'd like that too. <laughs> See how it goes when you're recording. <laughs> <laughs> but I never really yeah. thought mm -hmm. uh, about the freedom from religion until that moment. Yeah. It's okay, you know. It's like, it's okay. I don't think I tagged the right person. I was trying to tell someone we're live. <laughs> um, throw away a Duco victim. Hi, Cat Glitch. How you doing? Yeah, it's just that for me, I've been not practicing um holidays for so long because it occurred to me i have no idea what ritual i'm participating in have you guys ever thought about that and i've read lots of articles i'm sure some people have already crossed this bridge um while back and i did too you know uh, i'd say gosh i i would say 20 years ago i just stopped i can't uh can't get behind the falsity it feels for me, knowing what I know now. I keep referring a lot to this really cool book. Yeah, yeah. Feel feel free to put stuff in chat. Equivalent wish. Um, it's uh, please stay agnostic and don't slide into full blown atheism. Yeah, I am. I get you. I'm agnostic. Always remain open. God is real. Wait, wait, wait. Now you're preaching. He's happiness, jolly. You don't know that. Just like I don't know. Okay, here's what I was going to tell you about why I say God is the biggest grift. Because, and I'll tell you about this other book in a minute. Because if you say, I know where you go when you die, and I'm going to help you make sure it's heaven. You already fibbed. Oops. Just they, do they still say fib? We're so, still say Phil? we're both old, but, <laughs> but, um, if, if you trick people and my leader did this, my master did this, I will make sure 
she said we because she always was channeling everybody, whoever she wanted. <laughs> um, I'll make sure that you experience ascension when you die. Give us the money <laughs> that you were going to give the doctor. This is for real. I would hear these conversations in so many words. Okay. The prom the very promise of a safe passage to heaven is also a lie. You cannot guarantee that. Once the person disappears, we still don't know. We have no proof for sure of where we go. It isn't scary to think about that. It's just reality. Okay. And um Robert J. Lifton, amazing philosopher. Amazing. Um, he speaks about this in multiple books about death anxiety and and you guys interesting term because cults i think i talked to you about this too mom cults throw uh the annihilation stuff at us all the time like um it's technically called apocalypticism say it with me apocalypticism big word Anywho, that was a joke. Please put uh, comments in chat. It's just easier than me having to do a bunch of technical stuff. In this book, all you want to know but didn't think you could ask, religions, cults, and popular beliefs. Authors, Jessica DeVega, Christine Garkey. Really cool uh, two female religious teachers. And they cover every religion. In it, one of the religions or isms that runs through a lot of religion is apocalypticism. And I see it in political, too. Um, your team, are we saying all religions are cults? Um, I've heard this so much since I've been back, you know, into speaking out over this year. This is the biggest debate are all religion cults in the cult industry, like people that are speaking out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For me, I do not want to get trafficked into another religion. I'm not gonna. Um, once you survive a cult, see Jesus and God being used against you on a regular basis, Buddha, et cetera, in my case, um, I'm going to belong to multiple belief systems and not lock into anything and be coerced into one belief. So for me, I feel that rituals closed in societies in religion are cults. Can you have a religion that does not act like a cult that supports the community? Yeah, you can. Now, the moment it crosses over into politics, it's no longer a religion. It's some kind of collusion with the government. So you have to ask yourself, show me a pure religion and then I'll show you where someone is getting benefit that they don't talk about. So eh, big discussion there. So we're not really um, making that large generalization. I personally feel that religions are cults though. After everything I've, you know, and I went around to, um, <laughs> I went around to multiple religions as soon as I get out. Did you? Because I wasn't with you, but I don't remember. I don't think you did. No, you I were done. I pretty much had enough. <laughs> my mom's my mom took us to a cult, lost her kids, and then barely reconnected with us ten years after we all got out. And yeah, so you weren't having that? Yeah, no, I wasn't interested in anything else. <laughs> it was over. <laughs> You're done. Um, life ain't easy comments. God isn't real, but it's always good to have an open mind. And we also must not push our beliefs on others. Correct. Life ain't easy guys. Um, I say you know, freedom to think is our best, uh, asset as humans adapt to think, to explore, exploring Equivalent wish, my mother and I survived with other members of our family that were, are not speaking out, but we are. We survived Morningland Church. It's renamed Morningland Community. It's also gone by the monastery. It's in Long Beach, California, and you can see more at FrankieFilesPodcast.com. 
I have the public statement. I have episodes and stuff on them and they're squirmy. Um, the last week's Reddit talk uh, a few days ago, I think my mom heard that one too. I don't know if you heard that one, but it gives an update on the Morningland cult, um, how they're getting so tricky at rebranding, but this is how they've stayed along around for 50 years. Hey, hey, mom, remember in the 80s when people made a, a website called x-morninglanders.com? And everyone thought it was going to take down Morningland? Yeah, we, we have, everybody joined the xmorningland.com. And then they sued him and tried to get the website they URL. They win a lot. They yeah. had Ed Masri as an attorney um, till his death. Guys, that's the one who was in Aaron Brockovich. It's his story. So very expensive lawyer getting them out of all the criminal activity. Um, I'm going to refresh these comments here. And Morningland is a cult. Don't, don't want to mince words. Now, okay, what is your opinion? I, I, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this, so I'm putting oh, you on the spot. Put me on the spot. Uh, you can say no comment, but since someone already started this, started in on this about religion versus cult, what is your opinion of people who help someone leave a cult only to try to recruit them into Christian religion, a new church? Put your comments in the text, please. Well, first of all, that's taking advantage of a person that's at a very tr sensitive time in their life. Right. Right. And I don't I don't uh, like that at all. OK, so you're not. So so you wouldn't like to find out that my my uh, insular cortex is flipping the bleep out because the insular cortex where we register disgust in the brain. OK, live and learn there. Your Your kids, <laughs> your kids telling you stuff. Okay. My insular cortex has discovered that a lot of it's happening. There's podcasts that try to recult people, uh, say they're for cult recovery or anti-cult or activism. And then on it, you listen and it's trying to get you to go to their church. Apologia Church is doing that. Siren Warner exposed that. But it's not unusual. There's people who are meditation specialists. I'm not saying any one person, but it is quite often who are also cult recovery um, therapists. So, so for us who've been burnt by ideology, it can be tricky finding other ideology that's safe. The, well, there's so many sensitive thoughts that are in my mind right now. I just remember how uh, vulnerable I was and mm -hmm. all the stress that I was under at that time. Uh, I don't know that I would have listened to anybody that was going to try to sell me anything else. Mm -hmm. But I'm in a different category than <laughs> somebody you. in my daughter's age. 20 years apart. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. And I was born in the 60s. So that gives you guys a uh, an idea. A lady never tells her age. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, but sort of. <laughs> um, and I'm with FrankieFilesPodcast.com. There's a ton of stuff there um, for your listening pleasure. And we do have some really intense conversations there. Um now, this one, for me, I, I don't, I'm not in the cult recovery industry except via a podcast. So I don't make money off counseling. I don't run a psychotherapy sessions. I don't, I'm not a psychologist. Um, I'm only going to sell my memoir. I'm not selling recovery material unless I write the book I want to write about um, cult kids and, and stuff we deal with. But I'm really kind of, um, I won't linger on this too much because this is supposed to be an uplifting 
<laughs> broadcast for those of us depressed during the holidays who feel out left out. Let me let me pile on. <laughs> but no, I'm really bummed. And I say, you know, put your flag up because the intense recruitment to try to get us into groups once we relieve a cult is ridiculous. I saw, uh, let's see, I follow Ryan Hernandez on Twitter. He is, he was in Catholic mission work that that was really abusive for about a decade. And we're back. Right. So, so you get out of a cult, you don't know what to think about, to believe in. You're still doing stupid rituals. I was, we used to do a ritual. We hold, hold our hands over the fire and then place it to the forehead and the heart. Was there another? The rest doesn't matter. <laughs> Only the upper chakras mattered. No, I don't know. And then put your hands in water and place it to your forehead. Some about the third eye, not sure. And so like, I don't know, a year or eight months after I left, I was like, what am I doing? How long did it take you? This is my mom. Well, it, it took me three months of doing that. God. And, and I, I stopped right in the middle one night and I said, uh, why are you still doing this? Right. You promised me no more religions. <laughs> so, so I have to say the two of us like saying, why am I doing this now? Now put millions of years on that or thousands and there's religions and rituals we all are doing. We still don't know what or why um, there's an explanation given, but it's like, I bet that's not how it started. And I've been researching on this topic because, you know, the holidays bring out, it's a splitting what, part of the Red Sea, religious versus non-religious. And it can be heated at parties and, and family gatherings and stuff. Oh, well, you know, we got to do what's comfortable for us. But but it's like, okay, not to be religious. We don't have to put religion down. But it also is the fact that it's hard to deny that through time, God has the word God, the scripture of the supposed word of God has been used to hurt millions and millions of people and to kill millions of people, to, to do uh, live uh, stillbirths, cause people not to have babies because of some religious stuff. And then we say, well, you can't have <laughs> rights to women. It's like, you guys have been taking rights under the guise of God for some time. Let's get it straight here. We cannot prove the existence. So it isn't fair to say, well, I talked to God just yesterday and I found out, you know, like, uh, I found out that the hail bop is coming and we all have to take it to get to heaven's gate, you know? So like, how far does it go? Um, one of the chatters asked if there's any Jehovah's witness in the house, um, on stage, you have mom and daughter from new age religion. And, you know, it's, it's one of my goals to get these Sunday talks to be round tables where we represent a bunch of different religions every time. Cause if you compare and contrast, you know, you're going to find a lot of the insanity overlapping <laughs> and the rituals are borrowed. Let's just say, let's just say it like that. Now, if you, uh, I'm looking in the chat here, give me a second. About the idea the idea that God is fiction is so offensive to some people, but it's like, um, we do a lot of, of, uh, making stuff up to make ourselves feel good. I'm not saying a higher being or energy doesn't exist, but it's funny to me how the ultimatums are in place.
Right, mom? <laughs> I don't have a comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that special? <laughs> so easy. Being a mom, you earned all the credits already, so no one can really force your hand. <laughs> Not believing in the second biggest belief in the U.S. is this title. They're different. Um, non-religious, non-believers, and agnostics. Bigthink.com. It says types of atheism. So they put agnosticism in there. There are over a billion people in the world who are not religious. It's the second biggest belief in the U.S. And by the way, it's listed in this book I mentioned all you want to know, but didn't think you can ask, I think instead of ignore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Let's go off this instead. It's atheism and then agnosticism. I forgot about it being here because I like the wording these guys use. These guys are amazing. 267. You guys, have you, have you had a physical book in your hands lately? I recommend it. It's the best. Okay, agnosticism. Agnosticism is a physical position in which proponents are skeptical at the existence of divine being, stating that it is impossible to prove using human reason. Agnostic, agnostic user, uh, literally means not knowing. or unknowable and it's different from atheism as atheism explicitly asserts the divine beings do not exist i can't go there i'm not saying uh, i'm not saying you know anything more than that i just can't say they don't exist i mean it's like saying we didn't exist before we were human mm -mm, unknown <laughs> we don't know right history Agnostics make no specific claim about the reality of supernatural realm or of any deities. See, I'm just saying you don't know, so stop telling me you know. It's real simple. In the 18th and 19th centuries, David Hume, Immanuel Kant with a K, and Soren Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard was skeptical of any claims for proof of the existence of God. However, it was T.H. Huxley in the 1860s who coined the term agnostic because agnosticism is a category of not knowing rather than a specific set of beliefs. It is not easily defined. I like that. That's the part I like the most. Um, the pressure to be in a belief system is convenient for society because it's called um, po identity politics. You can go, okay, check marks. So if she's Catholic, she believes in this, 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 this. And she's also a voting block complaint. That's why I'm independent and non-disclosed on religion. It's like, you know what? Well, you can't peg me. I'm done with, with the whole pegging. Comments. One second. And this book is All You Want to Know But Didn't Think You Could Ask. My favorite right now, which has covers um, written by two religious teachers, high school. <laughs> I'm just like, let's handle it at a high school level. If we could all get an agreement on high school level. I'm just waiting for this chat to load in real time here. Um and Daniel said, or oh, Daniel, lads, at the end of the day, at the end of your life, it's not going to matter how much praying you do. Maybe you'll get into heaven. Maybe you'll reincarnate as a dog. So, Daniel, you just stated that you believe in reincarnation. No one knows if that's true, but just FYI, it is part of a belief system not to be taken for granted. That's one of my shticks. Okay. But anyway, um, if you don't stop worrying about it and actually live your life, then you're going to spend way too much time thinking about it. You'll end up having a pretty shitty, oh, shite, excuse me, must be British, life. Anyway, if there's a God up there or gods or holy dog, 
they'd want, <laughs> want you to make the most of what you have. Worry about that when you get there. You don't know that either. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like you're speaking for God and God is a fiction. So this is where we get into some weird third party conversations. So right now, can you hear him? No. But I like your um, open mindedness. I'll just say, you know, like no judgment, but I challenge you just do the critical thinking. It's fun. It uses your mental muscles and then it doesn't put you in a little box. Okay, um, going on about agnosticism, because agnosticism is a category of not knowing rather than a set of beliefs. It's not easily defined. For example, in 08, the U.S. Religious Landscape Survey indicated the 55% of self-identified agnostics expressed a belief in God. See, you can't define people. In agnostic category. That's why that's exactly where I belong. It's like, let me let you know as daily. <laughs> Life's an ongoing experience. It's it ain't over, baby. Um, and 17% suggested they were absolutely certain that God or a universal spirit exists. In other words, a person may clearly believe in God, but may still be agnostic not drawing any conclusions about that God or making connections to any religion in particular. Unlike agnosticism, unaffiliated as a category of religious belief, does not have any specific history. Instead, it's a designation employed by polling organizations. Boom. <laughs> Just what I was saying. Demographic, right, Mom? In response to an increased dissatisfaction with organized religion, being unaffiliated is essentially a catch-all category, including atheists, agnostics, and others who currently profess to be associated, unassociated with any established religious tradition. So, so already it's funny because like these labels don't have clear usage in um, journalism, in in text in schools either just straightening out today what is defined as agnostic is catch it's stuck into a catch-all with atheism and it's not the same as atheism wait a minute you say it's not the same as atheism why well, no it's not and i have the definition right here mom <laughs> you know those people that just join don't know my og mom is here Mom's here. And mom is the reason that um, I have a podcast about cults because without her support, emotionally, I really couldn't have done this so far. And so, you know what? Um, how does the song go? Let's give the girl a hand. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> Okay, atheism is a philosophical position which is based upon the assertion that no supreme su supernatural being or forces exist. So the difference to me, I think you guys can use this at your holiday parties arguments, okay? I, In fact, I beg you to go forth and do so. Just opening up the conversation is stuff that we need to do for humanity's sake. Basically, people who are atheists are stating God doesn't exist. They're saying they know. Oops, that's where I get off. You don't. So you're an absolutist as well. You might as well be religious. Is that too much of a mental backflip, Mom? I love when you write, read from these books. It gives me, my mind, something to really dwell on. <laughs> it's so See, confusing. Just, I didn't have this uh, when I was in school at all, you know. Religious study? No, I didn't. It's funny, too. You know what? I didn't have a exposure to it either, but I was completely being indoctrinated by a religion. So... There's that. Well, we already know the education system um, is not alerting people to be aware of cults and propaganda. So I'm not surprised to hear you say that. To go on, 
Um, atheism's history is not exclusively a modern system of thought, but more broadly, a diversity of traditions questioning the existence and significance of God has existed throughout history. Some Buddhist traditions and non-theistic uh, purporting that no divine intervention is needed to achieve human enlightenment. In ancient Greece, the Sophists and Epicureans um, frequently challenged belief in the gods and divine action in the world, as did the philosopher Socrates. Um, some say Socrates. These philosophers did not completely deny the supernatural as much as they questioned religious political authority and the value of worshiping the gods of humanity, for humanity. Here, here's a little asterisk where I agree, but I'm still going to label myself as agnostic because it's the most non-label label. <laughs> okay, um, but how about this, Mom? They didn't deny the supernatural as much as they questioned their religious political authority. So this is where I'm at because it's like, We've all had those experiences where we feel something and we can't see what's making us feel that. And I don't mean scary. I just mean like an uplifting feeling or, you know what I mean? Like a spiritual experience. And I put quote marks on that because there's so much uh, meanings can vary when you say spiritual experience. Okay. But something like opening, awakening moment where you started to see the world differently. And I'm not talking about that time you did acid, whoever is in the crowd thinking that. Not that. <laughs> I'm sure that that chemicals can help have a godly experience. But, you know, I'm just saying regular daytime activity. Okay. So interesting. Christians were accused of atheism. Um, philosophers. At, at the time of the Roman Empire, Christians were accused of atheism for some the same reason as we were just discussing, failing to accept the gods of the empire as deserving worship. Additionally, so they were called atheists. Ironic, right? Oh, man. So the name uh, idea of atheism kept changing through time. It's like a, a moving object, like a snowball that picks up wrappers and whatnot along the way. <laughs> Maybe some bazooka, <laughs> some dog poop from the neighborhood. Everything's there. Okay. Um, at the time of um, blah, blah, blah. Additionally, during the Renaissance in Europe, a new type of humanism. What? <laughs> oh, it emerged in which people denied the religious realm as the only measure of excellence. What? I've heard this. Again, this is from all you want to know but didn't think you could ask atheism's history. This needs a reread. During the Renaissance in Europe, a new type of humanism emerged in which people denied the religious realm Okay, as the only measure of excellence. Okay, got it. However, none of these cases exactly mirror how atheism is defined today. Instead, the earlier understandings were a kind of skepticism and free thought which challenged the status quo. In contrast, modern atheists draw upon the same values but are more adamant in their ultimate denial of God. And I'm not. It's like, I'm not going to be an absolutist, but I am going to say I've watched the word and the concept of God migrated through a lot of interpretations through my time on this planet. And I ain't happy with them. <laughs> Comment, mom. <laughs> Yeah, I've never gone through a altered state of thought on the topic of God. I've stayed with one thought, and uh, this is all new. <laughs> this is really all new to me to read how many ways you can look at God. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a lot. And just the absolutism is what I want people to stop 
putting, you know, good luck, right? I'm going to, I won't hold my breath, but the absolutism, like when we feel, when we look at a waterfall and we feel a sense of wonder, it's beautiful and it's unexplainable and it's, it's mysterious. How did that primary water come from the earth? Swimming pop said, God hasn't spoken to me in any way, fashion or form. Well, that makes sense because we're not sure God exists. I won't say, I was going to say God doesn't exist. You can't prove God exists. So of course you wouldn't hear him. <laughs> it's just so debatable. Why is it so absolute? Because we need someone, um, for example, they, you know, what they say to someone who does a crime, you know, you're going to burn in hell. Well, that's, this is all m the myth to keep order in place. There's got to be a better way than browbeating people with religion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Looking in, in the comments here. Um, someone said condescending. A one word uh, comment is really not uh, able to be understood. Don't know what you mean there. Can't even comment. So I encourage you to go to bigthink.com. It says it's widely thought that there are roughly 10,000 religions in the world today. Most are familiar with um, most of us are familiar with the big ones, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and so on. But hundreds of millions believe in folk, traditional or tribal faiths too. Theologians, anthropologists, and sociologists are very good at classifying religions. People devote their entire lives to defining, excuse me, delineating between the thinnest, tiniest, most esoteric difference. Iconography, creed, ritual, worship, prayer, and community serve to draw the borders between these faiths. <clears throat> Again, bigthink.com is where this article is. Um, but this misses something outside of the church, mosque, temple, pagoda, is a shifting, enigmatic, indefinable mass. The group of people who belong to some type of atheism, it's no small fringe either. Over a billion of people do not follow religion. They make up roughly a quarter of the population in U.S., making it the second largest belief. Roughly 60% of the U.K. never go to church. And there are now more atheist believers in Norway. It's funny when you say atheist believers, believer in not believing. Okay. Um, notably, all not all atheism is the same. Interruption, swimming pop. My missionary neighbor said a verse in the Bible spoke to him, and that's why he packed up his family and moved across the world to Africa. Can't remember the verse, but it was in James. Yikes. Um, superstitious uh, signs telling you what to do. I've been there. I used to read astrology and take it seriously and read the horoscope and read my sign. Ugh. The types of atheism, according to bigthink.com, the problem is that these st uh, statistics do not tell a full story. The term non-religious is so broad, mm -hmm. is so broad as to be almost meaningless. The word secular, agnostic, atheistic, um, humanistic, irre irreligious, hmm. Now, did you guys see um, religious? Did you see religious, Mom? No, I don't think so. I um, don't. It, it Bill sounds Maher. familiar, but I don't think so. <laughs> that word reminds me of it. Bill Maher did a movie called Religious. <laughs> Pretty funny. He went around the world and spoke to people about why they believe in their religion. And when he put it all together, it was like everyone was conflicting and and everyone had the same story at the same time. It was like, what? Wow. What the heck? Different religions around the world. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he had the, and do you remember that swimming pop? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay. Humanistic, irreligious, or non religious are not synonyms. This is not some nitpicky ped, pedantry. Okay, big word. For the billion plus people in the world who are not particularly type of atheists, the difference matters. <laughs> yeah, Bill Maher. Yay, 2024. Oh, Southern Fox, you're just trying to stir the pot now. <laughs> uh, it's no 
easy talk to delineate these. Don't get me started, Southern Fox. She says, Fox. <laughs> it's no easy task to delineate these belief systems, not least because a vast number of them balk at being defined as believers at all. Ha! I just did that out loud. You got me. You got me. Some suggest it's easier to uh, describe non-religion as a scale, such as one to seven, likelihood of God scale, Richard Dawkins suggests in The God Delusion, his book. But this too puts the cart before the horse. Not all religion is about probability, certainty, or um, assent to various truth claims. Broadly speaking, atheists can come in three varieties, non-religious, non-believer, and agnostic. Well, I'm, I guess I'm agnostic atheist. This, is, this list is not intended to be exhaustive. Okay, so non-religious, first type of atheism means not subscribing to one of the big traditional religions, non-religious. But also much of this data is in most demographic surveys, um, hinges on self-identification. Swimming pop, atheist is a definition that says, I know God doesn't exist. And since I don't know, just like you don't know <laughs> God exists, I'm not going to make an ultimatum, but I don't. I don't think it's been proven that God exists. So that's an, the, the very narrow difference between agnostic and atheist. We're kind of exploring that today. Uh, the issue is that most people in the world would understand religion in a particular way. They see it as the formal creeds, practices of the established, organized religions. It means going to church, praying five times a day, or believing the four noble truths. But religion is much broader. 91% of people in China claim to be atheists. 70% of the adult population practices ancestor worship. Mm -hmm. Okay. 12%. Choose that most people in the world would understand religion in a particular way. They see it as the formal creeds practices of the established organized religions. It means going to church, praying five times a day, or believing the four noble truths, but religion is much broader. 91% of people in China claim to be atheists. 70% of the adult population practices ancestor worship. Mm -hmm. Okay. 12% self-identify with some folk belief. In China, and the vast majority practice the pseudoscientific, quasi-religious, traditional medicine. <clears throat> For a lot of people, atheism means not believing in this or that formal religion. For others, the word might bear closer resemblance to its etymology, in which uh, atheism means anti-theistic belief, allowing Buddhism, for instance. No, I'm not Buddhist. Many in this category we might describe as mystics. That is, they do not think any image or God of gods is right, but they feel that there is some kind of spiritual reality. Yeah. I would, do you agree to that? There's a spiritual reality. Well, I know I have a spirit. I'll put you that up <laughs> to you. But beside the body. But the consciousness. Is that what, like beside the body? Outside of the body, like a spirit. What do you define as spirit? Well, I have been outside of my body. Out of a out of body experience. So I know I have a spirit. Okay. So your consciousness was not the body. Okay. Okay. Yes. Not only the body, excuse me. Okay. So it is a curiosity seen all over the world. An atheist might also believe in angels, fairies, karma, a divine plan, a soul, ghosts, spirits, or Ouija boards. None of these alone make up an organized belief. The, they are beliefs of a sort. And that is interesting, agreed. Um, you can't pigeonhole people. And also, I question, like, you, um, excellent as Shathor. Um, FrankieFilesPodcast.com is the, is my website, um, for the podcast. And we are on hiatus until February, but there's 39 episodes. And, um, 
uh, okay, swimming props, stand by for that question. And then we, our group that we're doing the live talks in, and I'd like to, I've, I'm the host for the live talks. I'd like to enable people to, to do live talks every day of the week in this sub. So if you would like to be interested on the topic of cults, huge, huge topic. Today's topic is not the limit of our group. Please join cult podcasts on Reddit. Our cult podcasts. That's where you're at right now. Okay. So the question was, how did she get out of her body? All right, mom, mm. let's do this. You got that Q and A going. Mm. How did you get out? So were you still in the cult? <laughs> Put me on the spot. Yeah, yeah. My own words did that. I don't know this person, but he's got a good question. What happened, Mom? I already know, guys. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh, gosh. Um, it's going to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a very emotional state when, once upon a time. Mm -hmm. And I was in a group of people doing a mantra and listening to music. Right. So you and were hypnotized. I pretty much just, yeah, I was pretty yeah. much hypnotized. Right. We know now. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, pretty much let go of me. Mm hmm I was disgusted with the world, so um, I was very willing to depart. <laughs> mm-hmm. I found myself above my head and and viewing the uh, people around me. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. Um, Car Carl Coke one two three. Me too. So you've had an out of body experience. Refreshing the page so I can see your um, chat. Uh, um, it is not uncommon. Um. Uh, to detach from your body. It's weird though, right? When you're meditating and it can go too far. This one guy, oh, I wish I could remember his name. It was on another uh, podcast. And like um, I said, um, okay, Carl Coke, uh, raise your hand and I'll try to get you. And swimming prop, you guys are you guys are in lockstep with us in this conversation. Jump on stage. Just raise the... Okay, I see the hand now. Um, invite. Carl Coke. You better be good, Carl. We're in the jam here. <laughs> Keep it safe for work. We're talking about out-of-body experiences. My mom's never done drugs. So. Hi. How are you doing? Welcome. Um, I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. Right, so about the, um, basically, the last out-of-body experience I ever had was mm -hmm. when I was about, like, I don't want to lie about it, about 16, 17, mm -hmm. and I read, recently read about, uh, like, read an article about, uh, you know, out-of-body experience, how to actually, like, engage that and stuff, you know, for example, you know, if you would sleep on your stomach, right, and you breathe out properly, right, then you can feel your uh, quote unquote spirit, you know, kind of like leaving your body throughout your back and stuff. You know, you just gotta wait for that falling sensation, yeah, mm -hmm. which I did. And I actually managed that. You know, mm -hmm. after, after five failed attempts, I actually managed that. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, it was scary, I ain't gonna lie. Like, it was yeah. scary because, 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 as soon as I felt like I was falling, mm -hmm. and 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 I was pulling myself out of my own body, right? Yeah, I managed to see myself. Um, basically, I was against the wall, and I saw myself, you know, right. on the like, bed. Like you were right? looking down, mom. Yeah, exactly. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I saw myself, you know, sleeping on the bed. So weird, huh? And and I'm still, you know, like I'm I'm still alive, but I'm sleeping, but I'm breathing, right? But I can feel my own breath, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm looking at my own body, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm 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 at the wall, right? But I'm looking at my body. That was that was that was surreal. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and was it a meditation technique that you were taught? No. Um, what I read about and what I used was basically, it was a, uh, I would say like, like. <sighs> like really primitive version of it basically what we do is you would sleep sleep on your stomach right 
Um, mm-hmm. But you would spread all your extremities, right? You know, yeah. in their own direction, right? What you do, you would relax each extremity um, single-handedly. Like, you know, like, for example, your right arm, you relax it completely to the maximum. Then your right leg, left leg, left <laughs> arm, right? Yeah. And then after that, right, what happened is that um, your back, your stomach would follow automatically to, you know, follow your limbs. And mm-hmm. then uh, you just take deep breaths, uh, keep your eyes closed. Mm-hmm. And after a while, even if you don't want to, you would start to feel the feeling of falling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you haven't tried that yet, you can easily try that. Tonight. Well, I would like to say caution because you're messing with energies you might not know about, and that's why you said it was scary. Well, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> I, I, th- I think that I think that's out. why the, I think that's why I developed alcoholism. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, and so Carl, um, check this out. There's a web uh, podcast called. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, excuse me. Excellent, Eschler. The page is um, Cult Podcasts. That's the Reddit group. You're welcome to put material there. Be excellent in chat. I'm rep- replying to you. And then uh-huh. um, the podcast is Frankie Files Podcast, and it's a .com. You can send messages to me there, okay? And so I wanted to say um, there's a podcast called uh, Rachel Bernstein. Let's see. One second. Indoctrination Podcast. And she just uh, interviews a meditation guy where he was stuck out of his body for months and he started losing his mind. He was at a guided meditation retreat. So this can be, this is a stuff can be pretty scary. So they have them meditating 12 hours a day. This is a retreat. Can you imagine? I I can imagine. And I'll tell you this like firsthand. Firsthand. what What I saw, right, is that. When I went out of my own body, right, and literally I, w- I wasn't there for more than like, I don't know, a minute or two before I was pulled mm-hmm. back in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you this. First of all, you know, it was un- unbelievably uncomfortable. It was mm-hmm. scary. Right. It was weird. Kids don't try this at home. Yeah, do not, right? <laughs> Unless you want to die. Do no. Um, yeah, don't mess t- with those energies, you know? And on top of that, you know, you know what I saw when I was out? I saw my own, uh, my own ceiling, um, what was that? Ceiling lamp, I guess. You know, the whole decor and everything else, yeah? Mm-hmm. Stretching down, down to uh, my carpet, right? Mm-hmm. And then coming back up, right? Mm-hmm. And then I started to hear, like... <sighs> You were above your body. I was. I was hearing like weird noises, mm-hmm. right? And the only thing, and honestly, the only thing that pulled me in was the fact that I had to go to the bathroom. Thank God, <laughs> unintended. Uh, exactly. And actually, after that, I've never attempted that since because that, that that's a swimming pop. You're up. Yeah. Um, it sounds like to me uh, a very much higher level of. Uh, consciousness that uh carl's talking about and um it sounds fascinating um i don't know and, and can... you know you've heard of astral projection right Not, no okay it's it's a dangerous practice um where people try to um travel around in like another dimension and mess with people and they mess with themselves though so like you know it is an interesting um conversation but for me in healing from cults, this is what this, when my mom told her experience, she was still at the cult called Morningland, which is in Long Beach, California, and they do a lot of meditation, right? And so I'm going to mute you only because of the sniffles, okay? And uh, thank you. And and so, yeah, so so Swimming Pop, um, it's, it's um, even uh, to my surprise, this this uh, report I did on a recent cult in a high school in Leesburg, Florida, this Christian uh, coach, sports coach, he was having Christian young people do Bible study and astral projection. I'm like, what the heck? So um, 
it's a lot of who we, a lot of playing with energy we don't know about. I wouldn't recommend. And it's funny when people say they're experts and whatnot. It's like, you're messing with stuff. You're not an expert but you're messing with stuff about like astral planes and higher selves and this and that. Let's just admit we don't know what the energy is. is there's the, is positive the and there's negative energy. Is, you know? astral, is, is, um, is there documentation about astral projection or is that something yeah, off like? So many, it, I, so I, much through time. I, one of I think I feel like when I look back in history and my mom's here with me too, by the way, um, so we look back like 60s and 70s. It was full of people trying to do that kind of stuff. And I include the CIA. They were messing with experiments and th with the mind. Yeah, Just I know trying that. to understand, you know. And a bunch of people um, in meditation and, and other things, they've been to the hospital. They've been, you know, like there can be some serious um, effects when you try to disconnect from your body. It's Thank a you. weird thing. <laughs> what's the what's the um you mentioned the CIA and, and it brought it to my mind mm -hmm. um that, that they they came up with the drug and it was called it was called the truth truth serum drug. You mean and, acid? Well, no, not acid. Because they used LSD on people to to, to try to do that too. Was, what, what, was it acid? I'm not sure if it was acid or okay. some other drug that they used. Yeah, I'm not sure. That they that they proved that they could get the truth out of people. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to say, when when Carl was talking about um, kind of feeling out of his body with the experience, yeah, um, I was put on Prozac many years ago, and. After I get, was on it for about a week, I started hearing all these horror stories about the drug. Mm -hmm. And without talking to the doctor, I just cold turkey went off of it. Mm. And um, I went into this condition called, um, I, I believe it's called dis disassociation. Correct. And basically it felt like there was a bubble around me. And I was on the outside looking in on the bubble, but yet still mm -hmm. kind of part of that bubble. Mm-hmm. And so my mind was doing some really weird things. Right. I remember walking to the corner grocery store and actually doing a transaction, but mm -hmm. nothing felt like it was real. Yeah. And it took me about three or four hours to come out of this thing. Wow. And I talked to my doctor about it and she knew exactly what I was talking about. Oh, you got a good doctor. Yeah. She said it's a, that's a, that's basic, that's, uh, you know, uh, withdrawal from this drug. Wow. And another thing that your mom was talking about with uh, um, hip hypnosis. Yeah. I remember when I was young, I went to a show where they had a hypnotist and uh -huh. he got people out of the audience to come up on stage. <laughs> and I don't I don't think they could have been plants because they were just random people at the show. And yeah, I yeah, they do it. Yeah. I couldn't believe what he had these people doing. <laughs> but I thought to myself, there's no that. way he could have done that to me. But then I thought... How do you do it to all these people? So I, I I actually saw it happen. So I don't really know what to think. Big topic, hypnosis. So episode three of Frankie Files, I dug into that. And um, it's a podcast, guys, in case you don't know. Um, yeah, the, the episode on hypnotism discusses the chanting. It, I'm going to be doing more next season in this because it's a big topic. Like the singing, the chant excuse me, chanting the continuous prayer and lecturing is a way to um, create a hypnotic environment where we're more impressionable to material being ingested by the brain. And so hypnosis is pretty popular. It cools. It's their go-to. And I'm just like finding out the levels. It's really nuts. Um, Cause you know, like, especially so for Hindu and it's Christian too, though. Um, and many, there's always chanting with the prayers and repetition. And that is, that's really forms of indoctrination to keep us in, in line, you know. Well, really, I see that. Um, I was raised Jewish and secular, okay. secular uh -huh. Jewish, but um, so I was probably misfit and all that, but I, I don't really have anything to do with it. But my wife was more active as a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in both religions, there's, there's um, much, I guess you could almost say chanting because it's the, they say the same things at every service and they can almost chant the words verbatim every, yep. every service they say it so often. It's just kind yep. of ingrained in their in their mind. Yes. Yes. It's um uh 
one of the things about programming is neuro uh, neurons. Uh, they say there's a saying in the brain research: neurons that fire together wire together. So, um, so cult leaders know this trick or have figured it out somehow. Um, they want to get information in our brain, certain beliefs. Um, like food manifestation is happening or um, only I know the the Christ info. You have to come through me and I'm your master. That's some hard stuff to swallow, right? So how are they going to get us to swallow it? Um, hypnotism is a great way. It disarms your left brain. And I've been doing a ton of research on that and I'm going to do some more. I would encourage you to, to Google it. It's pretty surprising. And um, Having said that, guys, this is going super well, but uh, mom and I have some non-holiday activities to engage in, <laughs> some agnostic, non-Christian holiday activities to engage in. Mine still involves the nog, the eggnog. I, <laughs> I'm going to make us an eggnog latte next, <laughs> but um. I really am so happy you joined us here today. I would like to say, um, check out FrankieFilesPodcast.com for much more. We have a ton of stuff up there throughout the year. I've been making these recordings and also interviews and then some researched essays. I also want to say, keep your head up. If you're feeling depressed or separated from people at this time of year, you're not alone. I also understand there's members of my uh, family I can't even talk to due to the level of stress it brings for us. So you know what? Um, my heart goes out to you if you're a cult survivor and you're dealing with this supposed to be such a happy time, but um, sometimes we, separation is our best bet just for keeping a nice mental um, state of mind and emotional state during these holidays. So, so my heart goes out to you if you need help. Uh, don't forget, 988 is a resource for Suicide Hotline. If you need it or tell a friend or have it handy and know that um, many of us have survived those types of thoughts. So um, keep your head up and realize that um, every this too shall pass. Anything you're feeling, it, it'll it's just for today. So bigthink.com I recommend for wonderful these Theo discussions and philosoph uh, philosophizing, is, is that a word? And again, um, I'm Frankie Tease from Frankie Files Podcast, and I'm so happy to have you here today. Join our group cult podcast and have a really good season. We'll see you next Sunday every week, 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. And, oh, yeah, thanks to my mom for joining me today. I drug her in my studio. Bye for me. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye now. Follow me on Reddit at Frankie Tees and on Twitter at Frankie Tees for supplemental discussion. You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com.